Uh, first of all, there's been a lot of talk about what happened in this chance encounter, whatever you want to call it, at the G20 dinner. Can you set the record straight as to how long the president spoke with President Putin and, to the best of your knowledge, what they spoke about? Uh, I think that, once again, um, the Russia fever has caught up with the media and everybody ran out and tried to create a story that simply didn't exist. There was an official dinner. It was uh, made very public by the release of the president's schedule, as well as the official schedule of the G20, that the president would be at the, meet, at the dinner, that he would participate, that the first lady would be at the dinner and participate. This was something hosted by Chancellor Merkel, the seating arrangements were determined by the host, and um, you know there were 40 people there to make it look. Actually, there were more than 40 because you had all the leaders. Plus, each delegation was allowed one translator uh, to be present and to try to create that there was some sort of private conversation in a room with uh, 40 plus people seems a little bit ridiculous. Can the Secretary of State on the Russia meeting, the Secretary of State provided a pretty full readout of the President's conversation with President Putin in, in the actual one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Why not provide some sort of inkling of, of what was said in that conversation at the dinner? And, and secondly, why did it take so long for, for the administration to talk about this conversation? First of all, the uh, first account given by Secretary Tillerson was a formal bilat, uh, which is very different than a social uh, working dinner uh, with all of the leaders. Um, you know, he was seated next to the first ladies of Japan and Argentina, and we didn't offer readouts of either of those conversations. As a set precedent, uh, you know, President Obama had a pull aside. Uh, in 2011 at the G20 where there also was not a readout. In fact, ABC said at the time that it wasn't necessary because it was a private conversation of a social gathering. Uh, there's a very different standard that you guys like to draw between this White House and previous administrations. And you try to create a situation that frankly just wasn't there. In terms of how long this, again, this was a publicly disclosed event. The president participated in an official dinner uh, of the G20 that was part of his schedule that was released publicly. You guys came and took pictures of it. It wasn't like this was some sort of hidden dinner. Uh, the pictures have been replayed over and over. It was part of the official G20 schedule. So to act as if this was some secret is just absolutely there's absurd. There's a great deal of public interest in, in the, any exchanges between these two leaders. I mean, why did it take so long? Why did it take so long for what? I, I'm, I'm lost on your question here. I'm not trying to be uh, dismissive, but it seems silly that we would disclose a dinner that we had already announced he was participating in. I, I'm not sure what other announcement should have been made. Um, you guys have pictures of the event taking place, and it was on both the president's schedule as well as the G20 schedule. Sarah, Sarah um, is the president confident that the, the Kremlin translator was uh, accurately conveying what he meant to convey to Vladimir Putin? I mean, it, it is typical protocol to have either another official or a translator there so that the presidents can understand each other properly. Did he trust the Kremlin translator to portray what his thoughts were accurately? I believe so. Even uh, members previous of the previous administration uh, from the State Department said that it wouldn't be um, advantageous for that translator not to be fully accurate. So, but was it, or Do you mean to say, though, that it wasn't uh, in-depth enough or sensitive enough that he felt it uh, a matter of, you know, a need to have accuracy and have someone else there? Because obviously he wasn't staffed for that. As you said, he was staffed for the Japanese translator. Right. Again, this was a social dinner, and that was, you know, the nature of the, in the evening. The double play, Sarah. But let me follow up on Margaret here and John because this news from the Washington Post that the president is now going to end this program to arm anti Assad rebels is obviously significant. Did this come up in that conversation at dinner? Not that I'm aware of. Alex. Okay, so the second question then on the Election Voting Commission um, the person that the president has installed to be the vice chair, Chris Kobach, is now saying that nobody, we may never be sure if Hillary Clinton won the popular vote also saying it's possible that if that's the case, we may never be sure if Donald Trump won the Electoral College. Is that the position of this White House, that it's unclear whether Hillary Clinton won the popular vote? I think it's clear who's the president uh, based on the fact of who's sitting in the Oval Office. So then does he not trust Chris Kobach to be running this commission, given those comments? I'm sorry? Given those comments, and if the president, in fact, does believe that the vote tally was accurate, does he not trust Chris Kobach to run this commission? Look, once again, uh, 
the purpose of the commission is to look at how we can best uphold integrity in our election process. We're not going to make any predetermined uh, comments on their fact-finding mission, but what I can tell you is that Donald Trump is the President of the United States, and he was elected by the people of this country, and he's serving them very well. Peter. Sarah, given the private conversation the President had with the Russian ambassador and the Russian foreign minister here in the White House, where it was later learned that he revealed some sensitive information, classified information to those Russian leaders, can you say with certitude that the President revealed no sensitive or classified information in any way? To Vladimir Putin during that private conversation. Once again, I haven't had a conversation about the details, but I know that the nature of the evening was a social dinner. April. Sarah, um, why didn't you have a conversation with the president about it, especially since it's been in the news? It's, again, another cloud of secrecy, controversy, omission. Not a cloud of secrecy. You guys want to create one, but it just doesn't exist, April. I'm sorry. Oh, but, but had you thought, have you thought about asking the president so that you can put to rest all of these questions? I haven't had a chance to talk to him today. He's been in the lunch for the last several hours. Uh, yesterday you rejected any suggestion that the president would be responsible for uh, the health care bill failure. Um, four years the, ago. The Obamacare failure, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. So yesterday, he tweet, uh, four years ago, he tweeted, whatever happens, you're responsible. If it doesn't happen, you're responsible. If the health care repeal doesn't move forward, will the president shoulder any blame for uh, what happened? <laughs> As, we've, as I said yesterday and as Mark said earlier today, um, when we're talking about the responsibility of the failure of Obamacare, no, um, the President's not going to own that. Um, we are committed to repealing and replacing Obamacare and expect that to take place. Francesca. Thank you, sir. You previously said that the President and Vladimir Putin only talked about the sanctions related to election meddling. It now sounds like you haven't spoken to the President about what they may have discussed at that dinner. So would it be true to say that you don't know at this point whether other sanctions came up? My understanding uh, is that the President um, only spoke with him about that specific uh, type of sanction. And that was, a, I think, a cross the board comment from him. And then I had a question about the travel following up on Mr. Short's comments. Will the White House commit the President to not taking any personal travel and staying in Washington for, for anything you know, but the personal travel uh, until the health care bill is done? That would specifically include the weekend trips to Bedminster or any of his other golf courses. Um, as Mark said, that the president's committed to being here uh, and working on the health care bill. So. I just want to go back to Mark's answer on the president's commitment to stay or go, to stay in town. What he said was the president will be traveling, but I imagine the members will be traveling too. So why is it not fair to ask that the president stay in town if he's asked the senators to do the same? I think Mark was referring to uh, the weekend, but not specifically taking recess. I think that is the expectation is that they don't take a full August recess until the health care bill is complete. So we can expect to see the president go to Bedminster perhaps during this time. <laughs> As always, we'll keep you guys updated on specific details of the president's schedule. But uh, as Mark said, we plan to be here while the Senate is in session and get the health care bill completed. Uh, two questions. Uh, just, so just to clarify on the, the conversation between uh, President Trump and President Putin at the dinner. So you're saying it was very brief. Is that less than an hour, less than a half hour? Uh, do you have any time frame for how long that that talk was? Uh, we weren't following them around with a stopwatch, but uh, it, like I said, it was a brief conversation and certainly not an hour. And, and just Sorry, to, second and another questions. second question on a different topic. So uh, the U.S. and China uh, were having economic talks today uh, about trade, and there was uh, there were two uh, press conferences planned for both sides. Um, both of those press conferences have been canceled. Uh, should we take that as a... a as maybe that there are some issues with these economic talks going on, with the trade talks going on with China? I would refer you to the Department of Treasury to talk about the details of those plans and, and whatever schedules that they may have changed. I can't speak about their schedule. Abby? So just um, a quick question. I think this was sort of brought up with Mark when he was just here, but did anyone at the White House ask Corey Lewandowski and David Bossie to go to the Hill on President's behalf to lobby lawmakers on the health care bill. I, I'm not sure of any asks that took place. Is 
are you guys aware that they are there doing this? I read a report saying that they were there, but beyond that, I don't have any knowledge of um, a specific ask made of them. But is it possible that they were asked to do that by someone in this? I, I mean, I think these are both two people that uh, strongly support the president, support his agenda, and that's certainly, I think, very public, uh, given that they have been um, supportive of the president throughout the campaign and even in the administration. And I don't find it surprising that they would advocate for the agenda of the White House uh, at any opportunity they get.